Hi guys, today I'll explain about variable air volume system, VAV system. So I'll go through some of the components that made up of a VAV system. Then I'll put all these components together and explain how the entire VAV system works. Then I'll end this video with some of the pros and cons of a VAV system. So first of all, what is a VAV system? VAV stands for variable air volume. It is a type of air distribution system. Many people misunderstand that thought VAV actually is just the VAV box, but it's actually a few components that made up of a system. It's a type of air distribution system. So the core components of a VAV system is of course, first thing is the VAV box itself. Then the second component is the thermostat, right? Then we have the variable speed drive or the variable frequency drive, VFD. Then we have the differential pressure sensor or transmitter, the DPS, right? So let's take a closer look at the VAV box itself, right? So the first thing we can see is the metal box, right? The body of the VAV box is usually made of a galvanized iron material, GI. Then the second thing we can see is the at the inlet of the VAV box, we have a airflow sensor, right? It's usually just the pitter tube, lah, right? It works just like a pitter tube. It can be constructed in a different, different way, right? Some of it is they put it surrounding the inlet or some of it is as a cross shape, right? So its job is to measure how much airflow is coming into the VAV box so that it can decide how much air is coming out of the VAV box. The third thing we can see is a small actuator actually mounted at the side of the VAV box. So inside uh, of the VAV box is a it's sort of like a butterfly damper, right? It's just a blade and you can see there's a rod extended out to the actuator side. The actuator is mounted on the rod. So as the actuator turns, the damper will turn. So the damper turn will control the airflow. How much airflow will pass through this VAV box. So this is how a VAV box limit or allow or control the airflow through the supply duct. Now let's see how VAV box is actually connected in a HVAC ductwork system. So now here we have a VAV box and it is connected to the supply air duct, usually the main branch duct, the branch duct, right? So we have the airflow coming in to the VAV box and out of the VAV box. So it's actually installed somewhere in the middle of the ducting. So inside the VAV box, we have a butterfly damper, as I mentioned. So now the VAV box is at the closed position. So the damper closed, blocking all the air through the damper. So the other side of the supply air duct, there will be no airflow, right? So just now I said, we have an actuator that's actually controlling this damper, right? So actuator have two types, right? We have the on-off type, either on or off, zero or 100%. But for VAV, we are using the modulating type. That means we can open or close at different, different percentage, right? Not just on and off, maybe 30%, 50%, 80%, right? Depending on the signal. So for example, the VAV box can open 45 degree, right? 45 degree, maybe maybe this will allow 20% uh, or 30% of the air pass through the VAV. Uh, so again, the actuator can actually open fully. So now the VAV box is fully open. You have the full airflow through the supply air duct. Now, VAV, in order for a VAV box, right, to produce accurate result, right, it must measure the inlet airflow correctly, right? If you have incorrect inlet measurement, you have incorrect result. So to measure airflow correctly, we must ensure that the airflow coming in is stable. It's not turbulence, right? So that's why all VAV box will have a minimum distance requirement before at the inlet there, right? You need to leave a certain duct length to stabilize the airflow, then only you mount the VAV box. You cannot mount the VAV box very near to an elbow because at the elbow there, the air just bend in, then a lot of turbulence. You are not actually measuring the correct airflow. Then we will produce the wrong result, right? 
So in order for VAV box right to know how much airflow it wants to allow it to pass through, we need some control component. So the first control component is the thermostat. Thermostat is located inside a room, then it is used to measure the current room temperature and also it is used to set the room temperature. You can actually set right, how much temperature you want to maintain inside a room. So when the temperature deviated from there, then the set thermostat will send a signal to the VAV to ask the VAV to either increase the airflow or reduce the airflow. Then the second component we need is the variable speed drive. This is to control the main supply airflow, right? When you don't need so much airflow, you start to close the VAV box. You also want to reduce the supply airflow so you can save some energy, right? So this is usually mounted at the air handling unit, the AHU. Then the third component we need to control the VAV system is the differential uh, pressure sensor, DPS. This is a duct type. Uh, differential pressure sensor. It will be installed inside the duct. So because when the VAV start to close, right, it will increase the air pressure inside the duct. So this sensor will pick up the signal and tell the VSD to reduce ASU fan speed. So now we have these four components. Let's put them all together and I will use a simple diagram here to explain how all these things react and works together. Now here we have three rooms, right? Small, medium, and big room. So their size is different, obviously. So assume their cooling load also different, right? They need different airflow in the room. So assume that we are using this uh, ASU to cool this three room, and we have a few diffuser inside the room, and we are connected to the uh, duct, lah. Right? So to install a VAV system, we need one VAV box at each of the branch, right? Each of the duct branches. Right? This is depending on how you decide, right? How a designer decides uh, how many thermal zones I want, right? You can use one VAV for one room. Also, you can use if the room is big enough, maybe you want to use two uh, VAV and separate the same room into two different thermal zones. So this is depending on how the system is designed. So here, our case is we have three VAV. So the VAV is actually handling the total airflow in each of the room, right? Then the diffuser will separate the airflow later on. Then the second component we need is the thermostat, right? We need one thermostat in each of the room, right? So each of thermostat is corresponding back to their VAV box. And the third component we need is a VSD to the air shoe. Basically, we are upgrading the air shoe because traditional air shoe is fixed speed. They can only run in one fan speed, so producing uh, one CFM, right? Producing a certain CFM only. Now, we have variable speed drive. We can change the hertz, right? The frequency of the power, uh, maybe 50 hertz, 60 hertz, down to 40 hertz, 30 hertz. This will change the uh, the fan speed, right? Then you change the airflow. Then the final component we need is a DPS, right? A duct type DPS, you know, inserted into the duct to sense the pressure inside the duct. So now, how this thing works? Assume everybody is happy, right? The system is running, everyone is happy. Then suddenly, it is evening time, right? The sunlight moves to the other direction. Assume medium medium room right the sun moved to the other direction heat gain is lower so suddenly the medium room said bro it's too cold right what can we do so the first thing is the thermostat will pick up this signal right for example if you set the thermostat at 24 degrees celsius now it's suddenly 23 degrees celsius it's too cold right so we want to reduce the airflow the thermostat will tell the VAV to close the damper the actuator will move a bit Right, to close the damper and how much it moves there is actually depending on how you program the system. Right? This is done either at the factory and also at the site. Right? After the building complete, you want to fine-tune it. Okay, then the VAV will close, like close a certain percentage of damper. Then because the DMV damper is closed, the air pressure inside the duct will increase. Then this DPS will detect this 
pressure increase and it will tell the VSD to reduce the fan speed. So the VSD will reduce the hertz and the ASU will rotate. Now fan speed will reduce and the CFM will reduce. Then uh, everybody go back to normal again. The whole thing is balanced again. Then the medium room will have reduced airflow, right? So you save some energy. So until uh, somebody is too cold again or too hot again, then the damper will open back, then the VSD will ramp up, then the CFM will go up again. Until then, everybody is happy. So now why we want to use a VAV system? Why well, we want to vary the airflow, right? So the first thing obviously is the energy efficiency, so the saving, right? Because traditional system, we have fixed speed. You now here and there, sure, we have a few room that is too cold, right? So, but if you are using a traditional fixed speed system, you can't do anything, right? You know, you can't reduce airflow, anything, so you just leave it too cold, right? Actually, you are wasting energy. So via variable uh, air volume system, you can actually reduce the air issue fan speed, then you save energy. So the second reason to use is also related to the efficiency, right? Is the certificate, right? The compliances, right? Because now nowadays, a lot of uh, places we have high energy standard, right? We want to save energy. So VAV is one of the saving method, right? For the HVAC system. So if you are if the project need a very high energy standard, you know, you want to get some certain green building uh, certification, you want to get some point, right, to get it certified, then VAV is one of the way, you know, one of the option to use. Not necessarily you must use, but if you add some point, then maybe you will get the higher certificate, right? And then the result of the VAV box will be improved comfort, right? That's one of the reasons you want to use VAV. You can create multiple thermal zone, right? Just now like I say, then everybody will be happy, right? Everybody will be very comfortable, right? Then the one, the final reason of the uh, the last reason I can tell you is the for marketing purposes, right? Nowadays, you know, if you have high energy efficiency, you have green building certificate, and also you are you create a very good working environment, especially like office building, right? Then you can use it as a selling point, right? To sell your building or you can rent your office floor, right? Then VAV box, you now you have a VAV system is a marketing point. So let's also talk about some of the reasons why you don't want to use a VAV system, the disadvantages of the VAV system. So first is of course the increased upfront cost, right? You see VAV, there's you now five to six VAV box in the floor, then you need probably five to six uh, thermostat also. Then you need a variable speed drive and also depending on your ducting layout, maybe you need one or two differential pressure sensor. So all these things, you know, add up to the total, you know, construction cost, right? Because uh, especially when you say a, a building, typically we have how many? 20 floor, you know, 25 floor. Then maybe you have hundreds of this additional component just to uh, make this VAV system uh, works, right? So it's a huge upfront cost, right? The second thing is potential noise issue, all right? Because you see, we design a diffuser to around 300 CFM to control the noise. But then you can see one VAV box is actually serving three to four uh, diffuser. So it's actually handling 1000 over CFM. Uh, 1002, 1004, 1005 is still okay, right? It's still not quite you can hear the noise but if your VAV box right you want to reduce the VAV box right you start to design one VAV box serving you now seven to eight diffuser maybe your VAV box is handling more than 2000 CFM then you have this noise issue right but also this can be mitigated right you can change the VAV box location then you can reduce the noise the third reason you want to use is it takes up more seating space, right? You see, traditionally we use a manual damper. We no need to account for the minimum distance. Just now you see, uh, because we want to measure it correctly, we need a minimum distance, minimum duct length. So all these branches will add up, you no? Know? Then the whole HVAC duct work uh, will take up more seating space. No, not all project have this privilege, you know? 
some of them they have limited space so it's very difficult to use VAV system number four is again you have all this thermostat right sensor actuator all this is like signal control board electronics right they fail sometimes and some of them especially low quality one very easy to fail right some a bit of power search here and there then they fried up so all these things you consider one building maybe have thousand of it right then your maintenance cost will be increased right and you know risk of failure rate you now here fail there fail then you have also a problem so that's also uh, a major reason why you don't want to use a VAV system so in the end it all comes down to whether you need a VAV system or not because you see if you're building the cooling load right does not change much right that means your cooling load is very consistent so you don't actually need to change the airflow so you don't need a VAV system it will not save you energy because the airshow fan speed is not reducing uh, but if your building there's a lot of changes for example uh, office building right people go in and out right and also if your building have a, a very uh, tall glasses right use all glasses here and there so a slight shift of sun will have a great impact on your cooling load then maybe you want to use a VAV system to maintain the comfort uh, and so uh, save some energy in the meanwhile if you like what I do on this channel and you wish to see I produce more this type of content on this channel help me to like this video and subscribe to my channel I'll greatly appreciate that thank you